Get yourself another job. What other job in this town? This is the only job. Where men are out uh, doing daring do and, and bloodying themselves or their, their enemies, women are taking a stand for something. They are the, the moral arbiters in a way. The definition of a heroic stature for a woman is a woman choosing in the plot not to do what society is telling her to do as a woman, to make a different choice, to make the choice that is not condoned. Child, you're out of your mind. You know you can't wear red to the Olympus Ball. Can't I? I'm going to. This is 1852, Dumplin'. 1852, not the Dark Ages. <laughs> Betty Davis was a trendsetter, all right. Whatever strengths we see in heroines today, they had their roots in Betty Davis. She was a heroine who knew who she was and wasn't afraid to show it. My father drank himself to death. My mother lives in Paris. I take a great deal of exercise. I'm accustomed to a reasonable quantity of tobacco and alcohol. I'm said to have a sense of humor. Is that enough? For most people, it would have been more than enough. But Betty Davis's heroines always wanted more out of life. No matter what obstacle was thrown in her way, she had enough courage to face it. In Dark Victory, you almost believed she could overcome death itself. I've never taken orders from anyone. As long as I live, I'll never take orders from anyone. And I'll tell you something else. I'm well, absolutely well. I'm young and strong and nothing can touch me. I think she's probably one of my all-time favorites. It was this kind of tough courage that was fear-driven. And it was as though she was always trying to be tough so that what no one would see, that she was this tiny, tiny little woman. It was the dichotomy that made her mind-bendingly fascinating to watch. It wasn't because she was so brave. It was because she was confronting her fear in front of you. Listen, Benny. All I know is that kid sister of mine came back here again last night, and nobody's seen her since. And get this straight. If I find out that you or anybody else has laid a finger on her... You'll what? I'll get you. Even if I have to crawl back from my grave to do it. I wouldn't put it past her. There seems to be no limits to how far Betty Davis would go for her convictions. I mean, what could be more heroic than fighting for the chance to go with the man you love to a yellow fever colony? I'm asking for the chance to prove I could be brave and strong and unselfish. Help me, Amy. Help me make myself clean again as you are clean. Now that's what I call a happy ending, Betty Davis style. Betty Davis always played a, a very strong heroine. And even though she wasn't known for playing incredibly vulnerable characters, she was somehow still incredibly empathetic. And um, you identified with her because of that strength. She was always fighting for something and always being able to overcome whatever the obstacle was. Betty Davis is in the headline news over a lawsuit with her Hollywood employers. Newspapers have made a lot of fuss because she wore the same clothes three days running, practically in rags. If they hadn't been paying so much attention to her wardrobe, they could have told us that she was suing Warner Brothers over a studio contract system that treated actors like chattel. She didn't win, but in her typically heroic style, Betty Davis fought the good fight, and she made her point, and she opened the door for other women to come through. She did not win that case, but since she challenged the system of contracts for Hollywood, it was the beginning of the end. And in fact, another woman, Olivia de Havilland, was the person who in fact broke that contract system. And Olivia de Havilland always cited Betty Davis's courage as being the thing that inspired her to carry it on through. Betty Davis may have lost the battle, but she won the war. From then on, her career was transformed. She got better roles, and one of her best was as the insecure daughter of a tyrannical mother in Now Voyager. I'm very glad to give a devoted daughter a home under my roof and pay all her expenses, but not if she scorns my authority. Well, I could earn my own living, Mother. As a matter of fact, I've often thought about it. Make a very good head waitress in a restaurant, or I you could... You may think that very funny, 
But I guess you'll be laughing out of the other side of your face if I did carry out my suggestion. I don't think I would. I'm not afraid, Mother. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, Mother. Now there's the mark of a true heroine. A woman who discovers she is stronger than she ever knew she was. You excuse me, Miss Spaulding, but that's just about the most ignorant thing I've ever heard. Mr. Tenby, I'm not ignorant. And I'm not selling my land. And I'm not giving my children over to anyone else to raise. I'm going out and I'm buying $15 worth of cotton seed. So I would appreciate it if you would show me again how it is you write a check. A lot of the characters I've played are in seemingly turns just an ordinary person that hasn't been tested, that hasn't had to reach down inside themselves and say, who am I now? Will I crumble and give in and give up and lay down in a heap? Or will I rise up out of these circumstances and survive? To me, getting up in the morning sometimes is, is tremendously heroic. Now you listen to me. If we lose this place, then you're going back to Bacon for every single meal. And Mr. Wheel, they're going to put you in the state home. And I'm going to lose what's left of my family. I'm not going to let that happen. I don't care what it takes. I don't care if it kills me. I don't care if it kills you. I'm not going to give up. And if the two of you do, you can go straight to hell. Well, Sally Field is a special kind of heroine. She can play a working class woman, whereas Betty Davis was obviously at least middle class. But they still had that kind of sense of roots of being anchored somewhere and the strength that comes out of that, of having some kind of background and the flintiness, the, the stick to itness of that. So in a way they're counterparts across the across the decades. Open up that hot The heroine has proven her bravery over and over throughout the century. She fights for causes, for love, and for life. But just when you thought she had risked everything, today's heroines have upped the ante. so magnificent at it. She's so physically statuesque and beautiful. And I'm compelled by it because you're less certain of her physical strength and know that, that she's having to fight an even harder battle because she has to overcome her own femaleness to win and beat this monster. Quite obviously, they could have hired a man for that role. To me, it made it more interesting and more complex that it was a woman. Today's heroine is going where no heroine has gone before. She's entered the boys' club, and no matter what evil the heroine faces, it's quite clear she'll be back. What's this? Uh, that's a grenade launcher. I don't think you want to mess with that. You started this. Show me everything. I can handle myself. Yeah, I noticed. Mr. Doss, do you think really that I could be a star? Well, there's one phrase I've always avoided like the plague, because it never worked out. With you, I think it would. You couldn't miss. Bogey was right. Just look at her. She is magnificent. A knockout, a goddess. But it takes some effort to look like that. Girls, the eyebrows up, a light powder. I want a little rouge right here. She needs a marvelous mouth. The hair, the hair, it's awful. It must come off. You have an impossible nose, a nondescript mouth. Your cheekbones are too high. But we can do something with the rest of you. Only in the movies can a woman be transformed from ordinary to spectacular in a two-minute montage. Of course, only in the movies could a goddess like Rita Hayworth be considered ordinary in the first place. Did you let your hair down? What? Let your hair down. But my favorite movie makeover doesn't even take one minute. <laughs> Take your glasses off. Strange. It always seems to work in the movies. She was just in the wrong movie. I'm just wondering if you have to, uh... Oh. 
Not necessarily. Now just watch this. In a few seconds, she'll suddenly be gorgeous. And it seems completely unrecognizable. Little things like that make it up. Hello. Hello. It's a good ploy in a movie to take a transitional character from one side to the other. It's used a lot, you know, Miss Smith, take off your glasses, take down the hair, shake your head, my God, you're beautiful. In the movies, you simply rip the frou-frou off your frock, add a little lipstick and a new hairstyle, and you're instantly ready for the cover of Vogue. Just like real life. How do I look? How do I look? How do I look? Like a queen, like a goddess. Stunning, isn't she? She's what we dream we'll see in the mirror after all those makeovers. A goddess. She's as desirable as she is unattainable, as aloof as she is provocative. These are the women who come down to earth and appear on the silver screen, and the door opens and there they are, and you're having a glimpse of heaven. These women are the enchanting creatures. These are women who are beyond reality, who are representing I really don't know what because it is so otherworldly, it is so extraterrestrial. They are objects to be admired, even worshipped. They are the goddesses of our times. Beauty isn't everything for a goddess. Aren't I pretty? Oh, God, I think you're real cute. Cute? Baby ducks are cute. I hate cute. I want to be exotic and mysterious. Don't we all? Personally, Susan, I think you're plenty exotic. But to be truly mysterious, certain rules apply. Number one, have an ambiguous past. Well, Doc, I've changed my name. Married? No. It took more than one man to change my name to Shanghai Lily. Gee, I wonder what she means by that. The goddess is a class act, but she wasn't born yesterday. She's every man's dream, and she knows it. Give up, John. Admit who you are. This light, I can tell where your eyes are looking. You can't help but look at her. Never underestimate the seductive power of the goddess. No one can resist her. You do hate me, don't you, Johnny? I don't think you have any idea how much. Hate is a very exciting emotion. Haven't you noticed? I hate you too, Johnny. I hate you so much that I think I'm going to die from it. Darling. Classic goddess talk. The general rule seems to be the greater the beauty, the deeper the unhappiness. I've never been so unhappy. I'm sorry to say this, but those who are most worthy of love are never made happy by it. And no goddess was more worthy and less happy than Greta Garbo. I think, she said, I've never been so tired in my life. Greta Garbo appears in a lot of movies that really aren't very good. The stories are frequently pretty miserable, and you sometimes think, is this it? Don't speak. But the movies don't seem bad when you're watching them because she's so wonderful. I'm going to Hollywood. I'm going to find a star for this show if I have to steal Garbo. I think that movie stars tend to sort of fall into two categories. The the people that you empathize with, that you, that you feel, oh, I could be that person, I'm a bit like that, you can put yourself in that situation. I think she's probably one of my all-time favorites. It was this kind of tough courage 
that was fear-driven. And it was as though she was always trying to be tough so that what no one would see, that she was this tiny, tiny little woman. It was the... Di Get herself another job. What other job in this town? This is the only job. Where men are out uh, doing daring do and, and blooding themselves or their, their enemies, women are taking a stand for something. They are the, the moral arbiters in a way. The definition of a heroic stature for a woman is a woman choosing in the plot not to do what society is telling her to do as a woman, to make a different choice, to make the choice that is not condoned. Child, you're out of your mind. You know you can't wear red to the Olympus Ball. Can't I? I'm going to. This is 1852, Dumplin'. 1852, not the Dark Ages. Betty Davis was a trendsetter, all right. Whatever strengths we see in heroines today, they had their roots in Betty Davis. She was a heroine who knew who she was and wasn't afraid to show it. My father drank himself to death. My mother lives in Paris. I take a great deal of exercise. I'm accustomed to a reasonable quantity of tobacco and alcohol. I'm said to have a sense of humor. Is that enough? For most people, it would have been more than enough. But Betty Davis's heroines always wanted more out of life. No matter what obstacle was thrown in her way, she had enough courage to face it. In Dark Victory, you almost believed she could overcome death itself. I've never taken orders from anyone. As long as I live, I'll never take orders from anyone. And I'll tell you something else. I'm well, absolutely well. I'm young and strong and nothing can touch.